In this video, we're going to go in this place and find out how wargaming and miniature modelling has been turned into blockbuster art. So the Royal Armouries is a free public museum in the city of Leeds in the UK. It contains one of the world's largest collections of arms and armour dating all the way back from Romans and BC times. And on the second floor is this masterpiece. It's a 4,000 figure diorama depicting the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 using 28mm figures. The battle's famous because the English, as you see here, used thousands of archers to repel French heavily armoured knights and on the day the English were dramatically outnumbered. Estimates from anything from 5 to 1 to 3 to 1. And the French on the side you can see advancing towards them in three big groups or battles. And then here you can see the model depicts the sort of moment of engagement where the French are about to hit the English line. I was really excited to see the model because it kind of represents a crossover moment for wargaming and historical modelling. Obviously it's a very public facing venue uh, and people's reactions to it when they walk up are, are pretty uh, obvious, people really like it. Uh, it's captivating for obvious reasons. The model was installed in the museum in 2015 and it was project managed by somebody called Dave Marshall who runs a company called TM Terrain and all the figures are supplied by Perry Miniatures which is obviously a wargaming and uh, miniature modelling company based in Nottingham in the UK. There are lots of other people involved in painting the figures and doing bits and pieces for it and I'll list uh, some links in the description below so you can see all the people that are involved and find out a bit more about how it was made. Now if you think I'm spoiling things a little bit by doing a video of it if you've never seen it and been to visit it, don't worry too much because this simply doesn't do it justice. Uh, in size and scale you can't represent it properly in, in a video and if you ever get the chance to go and see this in person I highly recommend you do so because it is something else and viewing it on the screen you can get a feel for it but you just can't get the same impact at all so go and see it if you get the chance I think one of the most impressive things about it is the level of detail so you see all these kind of almost dioramas within a diorama I like hear with the, the French knights, some of them are running away, having been sent backwards by arrows. And then when you look very closely here, you can see all the major nobility of England and France facing off against each other, and there are descriptions around the side of the model explaining who's who and who's doing what. It's very clever. From a history point of view, the battle is, I suppose, a famous English victory, in that they defeated an overwhelmingly larger French force by using these clever tactics using staked in archers to negate their lack of numbers and it represents uh, a turning point really in the Hundred Years War between England and France. Here you can see uh, lovely little representations of archers uh, having their ammunition replenished. It's not just the 4,000 odd painted figures that's impressive, it's the standard of terrain. Like here, for example, you can see the trees in all different colours of autumn reflecting the fact that the battle was fought uh, in the middle of October. It's also all very cleverly represented being quite low and you can use these wonderful little sort of periscope style downward mirrors at the sides to look down on some sort of battlefield level views. Overall, it's a huge triumph for everybody involved in the project and it represents a really interesting way to take history to the general public through wargaming and miniature modelling. Thanks for watching and to find out more about the exhibition, the Battle of Agincourt and everyone who was involved in the project, look at the description below.